Okay, so let's have a quick look at the birdhouse configuration file. The birdhouse configuration file is being read by the main program when it starts. So when you adapt it, um, you have to, uh, you know, reboot the birdhouse or you stop and start the program. Um, I also prefer to edit it locally on my PC and then transfer it to um, to the birdhouse. But you can, of course, also easily, you know, set up a putty session or uh, or a VNC session to your birdhouse and then edit it from there. So here we go. This first part we talked about. Uh, this mandatory to uh, to change. And another important one is this one called uh, channel publishing, because by default uh, the YouTube videos are published in private mode. Um, you can also see this back in your channel. Here it's private, so um, it's not allowed uh, to be, uh, or it's not possible for other ones to uh, to see this view. Only you can see them. Um, and if you you can of course in YouTube Studio you can change that into public. You can do it every day, for example, and uh, do it manually. Some people prefer this, but on the other hand, you can also say, okay, just leave it up to the algorithm and put them in uh, public. So you have to change this one from public, uh, from private into uh, public. And I would like to suggest to that that you do that because then it works autonomously and other ones are able then to subscribe to your channel and they get notification by youtube uh, when there's a new uh, video published okay let's continue uh, here are the uh, category youtube categorizations uh, categories uh, one is i think there one of them is family the other one is animals uh, i don't know uh, nature um, I, I played around with it. One of them is taken and put uh, in combination with the YouTube uh, with each ch each clip. Um, I would suggest that you keep it to these. If you change it, for example, and add uh, categories which which are uh, not allowed to be viewed by children, I don't know what's going to happen. So uh, just leave it like it is. I would say. Um, another interesting is that every YouTube clip has a, a title and a description. Um, title and description and these are not uh, you know they are generated semi automatically and there is they are the result of appending two random strings so uh, here's a array with uh, text strings something is ha something is happening um, some movements so one of them is taken and of a and one of them is taken from B so for example something is happening here might be a possibility uh, another movement inside this bird box so uh, these are uh, generated as a text string and as a description randomly. Uh, I think there's no limitation on the number of uh, text, so you can easily adapt them. Please ensure that you don't use any specific or special characters and um, you stick to this format and then you're fine. Uh, another one is of course the tags. Every YouTube video clip has a tag. You can find them also in YouTube Studio here. Uh, these tags are also semi uh, randomly generated. Uh, they are basically three of them are taken from a list, predefined list, and you can easily uh, change these um, these possible tags. So this is the the list. I think I, I put it on 30. Um, put your own tags in here, and three of them are randomly taken and put underneath your uh, YouTube video. Um, okay. So that about the text. Um, then we will have the minimum time between recordings i think i know it's 5400 seconds which equals one and a half hour uh, because when you put this to 10 uh, you get lots of videos uh, and it won't it, it won't work anymore because youtube automatically blocks you for a day so you have to wait a day and see the next day if it's working again so a little bit in the beginning i was confused so i thought why it's not working anymore because you don't get any errors uh yeah in the youtube uh in the api section you will you can see them back that's correct um so i suggest to put it on 500 400 um, um but if you st start and stop the program of course uh, this counter is basically set to zero again so uh, this is also an important one earliest hour six o'clock in the morning it starts recording latest hour nine o'clock in the evening uh, in the area where I live in the, in January now here in the Netherlands, uh, it's already dark at five o'clock. So I really should change this into 1700 and this, for example, to 10. Um, but please feel free to modify it uh, how you want. Um, the channel uh, cleaning hour, yeah, every every day it cleans automatically. The algorithm cleans its channel. It looks which video clips are um, must be cleaned. Uh, this this only happens when this flag is set to yes, which is default the case. Um, and at 11 o'clock, 
it basically says okay if i can only have 30 videos in my channel which are viewed the most or liked the most those are kept and the other ones which are old and not liked or viewed they are automatically deleted so this is uh, on the cleaning uh, process these are related to the camera resolution so um, this works fine with the camera i've got uh, you can play around with it change it um, please bear in mind that the frame rate and the resolution um, affects the working and stability of the program um, this works fine for me now for more than a year so uh, but perhaps you might change this because you're using a special camera i don't know um, um, it's not only the camera but also of course the uh, converter as you might have noticed that the recording is actually done in h264 format and there's a, a mp4 converter on board so the converter also needs to uh, process this and youtube of course also needs to be accept this this works fine but feel ple please feel free to play around with it same counts for the uh, numbers of seconds of each video clip i put them to 20 yes of course you can change it to two minutes but you figure out you will find out that the file size are becoming too big for the sd card and the upload process is going to take very long so i, th I presume uh, that most of you will keep it like on 20 seconds uh, if you want to play just carefully do it step by step um, on screen naming yes we have overlay text here so if you look in the video let's enlarge it a little bit here you see the name uh, here you see the date the temperature and uh, you can also if you want to have some debug information and you can see a daily counter how many birds fly in and out uh, how many how often it was triggered and this is defined in this text so the name to be dis displayed this name of course matches this name so here you see bird box demo uh, which comes back on the overlay text and here you see the, the date the date and the temperature and the humidity and of course um, you can have this debug enabled and when you enable it i would like to suggest that you do it then you will see uh, also the uh, number of uh, trigger events uh, which you also saw back in the debug file okay um yeah this is the it, it also messages mqtt uh, it sends out uh, every 10 minutes i think mqtt message that's what this does this is also interesting um yeah of course we would like to prevent that when an insect flies in or out that we have a recording um, so uh, when the tech detector is triggered it automatically reads again am i really triggered so it does it three times so i i figured out that the birds who are flying in here uh, for three is optimum when i put it on 10 or 30 sometimes you you uh, only see birds leaving the birdhouse box which is not nice of course so when i put it into three it's fine when I to put it on one, also little insects uh, like bugs trigger the uh, sensor. So I put it on three, also play around uh, with it. And, and again, when you, put, when you make a high value, let's say 10, you only see birds flying away instead of arriving. Um, yeah, so this is about it, what I could say about the uh, configuration file.